Ghostbusters! <laughs> it's ghost, not toast. Oh, hello chip pippers. Welcome to another Quick Bites, a portion controlled retro recipe without the usual bells and whistles. Not that you could eat a whistle, but... Thank you. Now, one of my enduring memories from childhood was how on earth the game Ghostbusters was able to remember your name and account balance from any computer anywhere in the world. I mean, this was pre-internet, so what was this, this witchcraft? Or ghostcraft, I guess you could call it. Now, the game was released in 1984 by Activision and coded by the legendary David Crane. He made the whole game in just six weeks, which is just mind-blowing. The game begins with a, um, a screen which has no playability. Uh, it's a title page, and if you watch for a little bit, we'll find a little bouncing ball comes along the screen, and you can sing along with the, with the game. If you don't feel like singing along, or if you don't have a crowd in your living room to yell Ghostbusters at the appropriate time, the machine will do that for you. <laughs> so, who am I going to call? Yep, I spoke to the legend himself for the making of this very video. Here's what he told me. I was already well into production on an original game, Car Wars. In that game, you customized your car with weaponry, and it had an account system to let you preserve your balance from one game session to the next. I read the Ghostbusters script and decided to see if it might be possible to put Car Wars into the Ghostbusters universe. The best strategy for designing a licensed game is to design an original game that would stand alone. I retasked the customization and driving aspects of Car Wars. Instead of machine guns, you added vacuums and traps, and the top-down battle view changed to driving around, vacuuming up ghosts. The film was an instant hit, so I ended up looking like a genius. We'll see just how that account system works in a second. And I told David that when I was 11, I actually got the game for Christmas, although I knew I was going to get it because I'd very naughtily felt my presence. Obligatory Star Wars reference. Thank you. And actually, here's a funny story that I relayed in one of our lockdown live streams about, well, the longest 48 hours of my life. I really wanted this for Christmas. I think I was 11 or 12. I think I have a picture of uh, Babby Fractic there. I was so excited. I never wanted anything more. I opened it up on Christmas Day, ran upstairs after we'd finished the presents, tried to load it in, of course, the good old data set, which I have here, and it kept getting stuck at the final flashing, uh, you know, decompression stripes. I was trying to align the heads, I cleaned the heads. Instead, I played with my bike because I couldn't get it to work. Of course, Boxing Day, Smith's was closed. So I had to wait two whole days. I know this is a bit of a white wine. Finally took it back to Smith's. It turned out there was a faulty batch that had been produced. Shame on you, Activision. Uh, finally came home with this working copy and it loaded the first time. So those loading stripes, they are indelibly burned in my brain. The sequence, the exact sequence, because I watched that probably a hundred times on Christmas day. I actually asked David Crane if he knew about that quality control issue. Here's what he said. But yeah, when I finally got a working copy, I was amazed when I completed the game. She was amazed too. It actually gave me an account number that would restore my bank balance even after the computer was reset. So what are we doing? Well, I have just told her that I don't have an account number. Um, if I had an account number, I could start with the same amount of money I ended the game with last time, which is a nice feature, allows you to build upon your account. I mean, how did this work? It wasn't even saving anything to tape. In my naivety, I actually considered that somehow the data was being transmitted to Activision's headquarters or something, yeah? Uh, maybe stored in their filing cabinets there, uh, the mind of an 11-year-old. But I mean, how else could I load my bank balance on a friend's Commodore 64 miles away? And actually what's going on here is one of, if not the first ever uses of passcodes as a pseudo save game feature. You want to see how it works? Okay. <laughs> I should just quickly warn you though that PCBWay are absolutely terrible at catching ghosts. But otherwise, I recommend PCBWay! Check out their 6th anniversary deals right now. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Perifractic's Car Bait. Doesn't it? So here's what ghostly magic's going on. 
So let's assume that we have a bank balance of $575,000 at the end of the game. To make things simple, the code ignores the last two figures, which are always zero anyway, leaving us with 5750. It then stores the 57 in memory address 25 and the 50 in memory address 27. So what about memory address 26 in between the two? Well, here's where things get clever. First, it takes your name and converts it into an 8-bit, 1-byte checksum. Here's what that means. Let's say we entered the name Frantic Pedro. First, it looks at the Petsky value of each character. Then it adds all those values together, giving an 8-bit result. And we can see here that the 8-bit result for poor Frantic Pedro's name is AD, which is the hexadecimal value for 173. Now, I mentioned 173 because next, the program essentially shifts and loops AD 173 times, changing it to become 2C. So 2C is what gets stored at memory address 26. So how does that give us a worldwide account number that we can use well, worldwide? Well, next it converts that 57 2C 50 from hexadecimal to binary, which gives us this with a leading zero at the start. Then, yep, there's more, it converts that binary into decimal pairs for humans to understand, giving this. And finally, it reverses those pairs, again for security, to give us an account number that is uniquely based off our name and our bank balance. This means that when we load up the game again from anywhere in the world and enter our name and that account number, it simply reverses the process and ends up again at 572C50. It can then simply check that the name we typed matches the check byte at memory address 26, which should be 2C, and then only if the name matches it uses those two other memory addresses to restore our bank balance to its rightful owner. And so the 5750 becomes 575,000. Congratulations, you just accessed your Ghostbusters franchise bank account from anywhere on Earth or beyond. Ooh. So why was it so complex? Well, simply to stop kids using random jump, jump and generators, <laughs> number generators to generate account numbers. Oh, and a fun Perry fact, David told me that the famous digitized Ghostbusters voice Ghostbusters! <laughs> thank you, uh, was his protege, rookie Activision programmer Adam Bellin, pictured here on the left. Well, there it is. So now let's try a ghoulishly fun little experiment. John Scarphone developed this Python script account number generator. We can just run it from the command line, choose a name and a dollar amount, and out pops our account number. Let's test it in the game. And look, Pedro is rich. At least he won't be frantic anymore. And we've also worked with Lars the 18th to resurrect his online generator and host it at my site with some spooky but definitely not sucky little additions. Just visit perifractic.com slash slimed. He slimed me! I guess Mr. Crane couldn't stop the kids forever. Sorry, sir. It's pretty interesting, huh? So there you have it. Ghostbusters wasn't transmitting your name and account balance through the ether into their filing cabinets, you silly goose. They were just using some clever code behind the scenes to make the whole process as invisible as a ghost. I'll be back soon with another full-size retro recipe. And until then, thanks for watching. Subscribe and join below. And cheerio. Cheerio! Oh, you're not going to stay here. Thank you.